Hey everyone, welcome back to these talks on St. Teresa of Avila's The Interior Castle. This is the second talk on the second mansion within the Interior Castle. So, we are moving then. We always have to remember that we're moving from one mansion to another. So, we move into the second mansion, the second dwelling place. And St. Teresa asks, what is the type of soul that enters the second place? And it's peculiar to think about, right? Because she's always saying, what is the type of soul, even though we're within our own soul? And that's certainly something to think of. Um, now, what is the type of soul that's finally sort of taken a big step, right? You've done that first thing, moved away from the material world. Now you're moving into the second place. What's What, what type of soul is this? And what are they doing here? What are we doing in here? This is a place for those who have begun prayer. And specifically for those who, in looking further into the soul, have realized that the first room, the first mansion, isn't somewhere that you'd want to stay for long. It's likely that if you stay in the first place too long, you're just going to get dragged back to the outer walls into the desires of the material world. Um, the first room is that differentiation between the material world and the world of the spirit. Um, you spend too long there, it's going to be a bit too much time for the devil to perhaps uh, try and justify, though it's never justified, but try and justify why the material world is so good. And the longer you stay there, the longer you're going to be listening to this, and the longer you're going to be close to... The outer wall and so this second place is for those that have realized you, you can't stay in the first place long okay it's rich but you need to take that in you need to get on the path of self-knowledge you need to move okay and this place then the second place the second mansion is for people who in striving uh have come to the realization of what is bad for them okay because you've now made that differentiation you're not within it and using it you've made that You've made that difference. And so they've come to the realization of what is bad for them. And that is good to avoid it. And so it's a beginning of what's bad, what's good in the world. And not just knowing what's bad and what's good in self-knowledge, but an active avoidance of it. But at this stage, mansions one, two, and three, it's still, and there's still a really uh, strong active element on behalf of those who are praying and moving. And this effort comes into play here because St. Teresa says that actually in the second mansion, it, it, it involves more effort than the first. Even though um, there is danger here, as there once was with, with the first, with the, the beasts and the devils and the vermin of the material world, um, and ultimately the unforgivable sin that, that the one might actually turn their back on God and go to the material world. There is an extra difficulty in the second room. And so we have to ask, well, what, how, what, you know, what, how is this more difficult than separating ourselves from, from the material world, from all those desires? Okay. And it's because in the first room, we were deaf and mute. Deaf and mute. We couldn't hear. We couldn't speak. We couldn't hear God, and we couldn't speak to him. But in striving for self-knowledge and in moving into the second mansion, we came to hear him, but we only came to hear him. So in this second room, the extra difficulty is because we can hear him, we can hear God, but we can't speak to him. And it pays to emphasize that in this position, St. Teresa makes it clear that we may still actually be occupied in, in worldly affairs. I mean, we're not going to be detached from them entirely, right? Because we still, we still have to be in the world, okay? But it's about that internal detachment, okay? We, we, we still may be occupied in such affairs. We still may be occupied in pleasures. We still may, may be falling into sin and rising again. But we're, we're growing in understanding. We're growing in understanding. And we're beginning to hear God. Um... But at this, you know, that's and that's the important that at this juncture in the second mansion, we begin to hear God. We can hear God now. And this guidance, you know, once again, think about that light. Think about God's voice as that light. 
you're now you're a little bit closer to him you're not as far away as you were when you couldn't hear him at all but now you can only just hear him imagine that's so delicate it's the most delicate that voice is ever going to be but it allows us a guidance and this guidance finally allows us to draw nearer to him um, and the voice is so delicate that if we don't abide by it quickly if we don't move quickly if we don't act in obedience quickly it dissolves says saint Teresa. And so, in a sense, the whereas the first mansion is really all about that relationship of moving solely from the material world in a very strong act of faith, the second room is almost like a look at both sides because we now know what it is to hear God. We, have, we now have experience of that other place. You know, the, 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 the deeper part that we've been looking at all along. We know what it is to not be able to speak to him. So we have this quite drastic experience of God. But at this stage, we also have the memory and perhaps even one foot still in the material world. And it's for this reason here, this extra difficulty that we really have to persevere. But in this perseverance and the fact that we are... Um, at, at a sort of deciding point, says St. Teresa, that this, uh, that, that, because, you know, and this, this often happens in people's lives who are searching for God, um, that, that the key deciding points are where attacks made uh, by the devils inflicting, afflicting the soul are more so in these rooms than in the previous one, okay? Um, in the previous one, in the first room, or even in the outside wall, the soul didn't really resist as much and the devil didn't attack, attack as much because the devil's are sort of thinking, well, you're still really close. You know, I don't have to do as much to get you back into the material world, back out of that first room, back into the worldly things, back into his domain. But now you're in the second room. You've differentiated between the material and the divine, the below and the above, uh, the horizontal and the vertical in a certain sense. Now you've, you've made that difference and you've now started to hear God. The the devil's going into, you know, he's starting to panic because now that other option is really becoming, well, not really becoming, but it's becoming clearer to you. Um, and now, you know, uh, uh, now we're moving towards God. Now we're persevering. Uh, now that we can hear his goodness, this is where the devil really will up his attacks and seek to derail people. And it makes complete sense. Luckily for us, because uh, we now have a closer relationship with God, the intellect, our intellect, the mind, the reason, becomes more alive. And this is a blessing, but it's also a curse in a way. If we become more intellectually engaged in this pursuit, in this endeavor of what's going on, one can intellectualize and develop a deeper understanding of the passage towards God. We can use our reason, we can use our intellect, we can read, we can read other books, we can, we can meditate and think about what we're doing in an intellectual manner. And this can deepen our understanding in the passage towards God. But equally, if we fall into the temptations of the devil, we may begin to falsely intellectualize and rationalize worldly things. And we might begin to think think, and somehow rationalize things which are finite as infinite. Okay, uh, We might start to rash, rationalize the relationships we have in the world and material things. And so it's once again, which way are you persevering? Which way are you really being drawn towards? Um, but... This form of, of false reasoning, of false intellectualization or intellect ceases if we just continue to listen to God and move towards the perfection, the, you know, really listen to that delicate voice because this is still an act of faith. And so it's the intellect with faith. Okay, So it's like the good, the, the, the truth and the good. It's great to have the truth, of course, but the truth has to be with the good and the good is coming from God. Okay. It's only through faith and faith in that voice that we can now hear, that we reach the fulfillment. Okay, The, the intellect will help us realize that um, the intellect will, 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 in sort of concordance with the good, with the faith, will help us realize things about the material world that, that intellect alone within the material world perhaps wouldn't want to realize. Okay, The intellect will help us realize that all we all we had in the material world will dissolve okay everyone who ever existed in the material world in the flesh will at one point be six feet under okay they will die we will all end up in the same place with respect to the material world and so in that decision in that intellectualization okay you find the actual truth of the matter 
in relation to the faith that you have. Okay, the intellect at this stage is 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 our friend, if it's taken with faith, with the good. Okay, we listen and then from there use the intellect. You know, Saint Teresa says, "Ah, my Lord, your help is necessary here. Without it, one can do nothing." Okay. So, and she says at this stage, and once again, she's talking to um, her sisters, that it might be helpful helpful for such a person at this stage to talk to those that, that now they've had this, now they can hear the voice of God. Now they might start to think, oh, wow, I can hear the voice of God. This is all, this is great. This is real. This is, this is intense. I'm beginning to develop this relationship. What should I do? St. Teresa says, talk to people they know also have a, 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 have a deeper relationship with God who can help them out priests, uh, members of the parish who've been in the faith a longer time, um, you know, for, for her it would be sisters or the prioress, um, people who know more about the interior castle. And basically perhaps try to talk to those who we're fairly certain have entered the mansion uh, as close to the centre as we think they might have, okay? And in this we, we, we are entering into the obedience, okay? We're entering into the notion that of, of a superiority for those that have spent a longer time here and have a deeper understanding. And in this determination towards the centre, um, is we find the determination slowly, slowly, slowly at this stage to lose our life for Christ's, and that the devil will eventually actually abandon us. And that in this fight that we're now undertaking, Saint Teresa says there are no better weapons than those of the cross. And so the difficulties of the first two dwellings, the first two mansions, is that. We are thinking still, because we have, we still just, you know, every now and again, a little glimpse back to the material world. And the material world teaches us to think in material terms. And so it may, teaches us to think of everything in material terms when we glimpse back at it, right? So when we think of reward, when we think of failure, when we think of success, when we think of consolations, we are still thinking of these often at this stage in material terms and this is one other thing that hinders us here and what we're doing is building our house on sand okay if early on at this point okay we've 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 pushed away the material world we've turned away from it we've turned towards the 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 interior castle the soul thus we've turned towards god we've making we've made a bigger leap away from the material things into the second mansion and now we've started to hear god okay now at this stage with maybe like a toe still in the material world and a couple of glimpses every now and again back at it we may begin to become develop a sort of arrogance okay where we feel oh look at look how far i've come so we start to seek very early on consolations okay and we start to think oh rewards consolations what am i going to get look at me i'm on the path okay this is going to be great and we're going to be, St. Teresa makes it clear, we're going to be very dissatisfied if we continue on that journey, okay, which really is one foot back in the material world, and it's a wrong way to think about consolation, okay. We're, we're really, at that point, we're entering into our own ignorance, okay, because in, 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 in such a manner of thinking, we're really just reaching back into our own ego, and what, what we're then doing is we're taking this journey for the wrong reasons. We're not taking this journey for God, we're not taking this journey for the voice that we can hear, we're not taking this journey for the sake of just just you know finding this beauty and this good we're not take, take, taking this journey for the sake of the light we we would at this point if we think oh consolations i wonder what i'm going to get you know it's a it's a bad way to think about it because we're taking that the journey then for our egoistic aims which themselves are of the material world okay and this is humility okay this is humility this is understanding our own insignificance and this is what the devil doesn't want okay St. Teresa finds it amusing that even though we know we're imperfect, okay, so we're at this stage we have enough self-knowledge to, to hear God and go, wow, you know, I'm starting to realize how imperfect I am, how fallen I am, how wretched I am, um, and how badly we are caught up in the, the material world, how, how hardly we've even begun to grow our virtues. Um, and yet she finds it amusing that at this stage, still we often expect so many spiritual delights and things to be thrown at us and rewards. And we complain about dryness despite the fact we've built up nothing of ourselves at all. And so it's in this sense, she says, we should embrace our cross early on. Okay. To suffer more will be to be rewarded more later on. So the determination to undergo these exterior trials is really determinant on whether God favours you in interiorly. So you, 
you, you've got to move that that idea of reward, consolation, and favor away from the external into the internal. And in doing so, it becomes a different thing because internally you would approach you be approaching it via obedience and humility and a different understanding of suffering altogether. He knows what's best for us, what is suitable for us. And it is our choice to turn to him and accept with openness what he gives us. At this stage, at this this juncture in this second mansion, we have no clue, okay, what we should be asking for, what would be best for us, what would be good for us, what would be right for us, okay. And so, for for Saint Teresa, the beginning of prayer, we're still praying, of course, at this point, should be to prepare oneself to simply bring themselves into conformity with God's will. We've prayed to enter. Now we hear the voice. Now we pray to conform to that voice to just whatever you give me is right okay the greatest perfection attainable lies in the greatest possible conformity with god's will sometimes um this takes on a peculiar reality says saint Teresa. okay the reality in the fact that in these early rooms which still have that connection sort of still close to the material world saint Teresa says the peculiar reality which might happen in conformity with god's will is that the reptiles the vermin that just managed to get into these material rooms, that we let into these material rooms, they might bite us, they might tempt us. But this is only so we know how to guard ourselves better and prove whether we are truly grieved by offending him, whether we are truly ready to move into those later houses. And so at the outer walls, we move past the material world. In the, in the first house, we realize why it's bad for us and we use the realization of why the material world is bad as fuel to move forward and now in the second mansion in hearing god we now have an understanding of what it is to hear him and so we now use that 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 sort of fuel from the um, material world of how bad it is to realize that we've offended him and to realize how we're not in conformity with his will okay so the second mansion is almost like a bit of a panic okay we can now hear the lord okay and it means it's not to, not to suddenly go, oh, I desire and want all this stuff from you. It's basically to suddenly want to leave certain things behind and run towards him, almost in like a flurry. Okay, It's to understand the delicate nature of that voice could possibly disappear at any point if we're not careful about it. Um, it's, it's to learn how to hear. And it's, it's at this stage to really give nothing other than thanks and humility for the fact that we can hear him. And in doing so, slowly prepare to give ourselves more fully to God's will and thus to be able to hear him more clearly and maybe maybe even be able to speak to him eventually and thus move further. But this can't be done from a position of material consolation where we're expecting a reward, we're expecting to be given something, where we're doing this for our own aims. Okay, This has to be done from a position of understanding oneself as a fallen being, Okay, someone who is still close to that first house, and therefore still close to the material world. Okay. One really needs to persevere at this point for the sake of God alone. For the sake of his for, of conforming to his will. And um one thing that's emphasized very subtly in this second mansion is the difference between meditation and mental prayer. Okay, so going forward, these things will now begin to split with, between prayer and meditation. And just quickly we meditate using images and symbols such as meditating on a gospel okay meditating on quite literally a symbol in front of us in mental prayer we bypass that and um we we, we bypass the symbolic knowledge and we seek direct contact and really at this at this stage um the, the, there's more of the meditation um going on but there is also prayer but the main thing to take away about from this is that you can finally hear god and that's not something to be let let away it's not something to let get away it's very delicate and when you can hear it you need to move um in a, in a you know in a, in a quiet calm manner but with haste um and with perseverance thank you very much and i'll see you all in the third talk <laughs>